Hi everyone, Naz here from InfoTech Journal. So today we'll be discussing on something that I just recently found out or I just recently learned that I found really useful. So it's my journal entry. How to generate a sequence diagram from IntelliJ using the sequence diagram plugin. It exports it in a plant UML language that you can you can use on an application or the web, uh, web browser to further edit and change the sequence diagram to your liking. So without further ado, let's just go through the typical flow of how you start your sequence diagramming. So for me, I usually start out on a piece of paper or a tablet. So you have your actor. Usually the actor is denoted as a stick figure, but some people actually use a box and they say actor. So it's totally up to you, it's your preference. Or if you have specific directions for an assignment for school or a specific method that your company likes to use, please follow that. Uh, this is just an example. So I have my actor as a stick figure. And then from there, you have your classes all object. These are denoted by rectangle boxes. So let's just call them A, B, and C. And then the next step would be to show your lifelines. Lifelines are just basically a vertical line dotted going from each element in your sequence diagram. Okay. Hopefully you can see that those lines are dotted. So the lifelines. After that, you want to make sure that you indicate the interactions or the sequence or flow within your program. Usually that's denoted with an arrow denoting a message. A message is a solid line or a solid arrow. Starting from one lifeline to another lifeline. This is your message. The reply message is denoted with again a dotted line or a dotted arrow. If you like to actually make some remarks or notes on your messages, you can actually do so. So let's say this is just a main because it starts in main, execution in main. This might be a method call. Okay, this might be a reply or return. Right? That's just how you start your diagram. Another particular important thing to note is in your diagram, you actually have activation boxes. Some people forget to do activation boxes, but when I start drawing my sequence diagrams, once I've completed the sequence or the flow, I would like to know how long a particular class is active. So let's just say for, you know, just to for clarity, I draw it a different color. Your activation boxes are just simply boxes denoting how long a particular class or object is active. And then from here, you figure out there's bound to be some uh, if else statements or loops in your program. So if you were to do a loop, you have a loop frame. They call it a loop frame. So a loop frame is simply a box over the method or the message that's going to be looped or the actions that's going to be looped. So we just draw a box over such. And then there's another box here that says loop. So just to be clear, it's just basically a box and there's loop and some loop conditions, right? Another thing that you want to note is there might be alternate actions or alternate options if else statements so from that one you can actually just do another box like that that has your alternate action indicator and your else and then the alternate action conditions in your diagram so once you finish drawing this out it's pretty rough and then you start doing the fun part which is actually the coding you code, you code, you code, and you finish your code. So once you finish your code, right, uh, you probably use uh, any sort of ID. But for this particular example, we're using uh, 
IntelliJ with the sequence that I can plug in. So from there, I've already I've already loaded an assignment that I made for one of my classes. So this is a simple application. You want to get started by actually having the plugin. So from there, you go to file. In file, you have your settings. You have your plugins in settings. And you just need to type sequence. It should be the first one with roughly about 599,000 downloads and 4.6, depending on the time frame where you actually see this video. Uh, it might be different, but this is just the general gist of it. Uh, the current time, it's actually 2.1.5 version, January 9, 2022. So you just need to install it and follow the instructions prompted to you by IntelliJ to finish installing this particular plugin. For me, I just say okay. From there, before you actually generate the sequence diagram, it's best to just start or run your program once, just to be sure that everything's working. So I'm just gonna run it really quick. So I just ran it and there's no problems or no visible errors in my particular application or my particular Java code. So from there, you just need to find your class, which has the main method in it, right click and generate your sequence diagram. So this is the generated sequence diagram. You can see here that there's actually more classes than my classes in my submission or my program. So here I have five, one, two, three, four, five. But now you see there's, of course, obviously there's more than five. You see the yellow ones are the, actually the classes in my program. The pink ones here are just supporting classes, classes that aid in the completion of your program. For example, in my class or in one of my classes, I actually store the email list in this particular assignment in an array list. I, of course, print something out on my console. So there's print stream. I have uh, one method that actually calls in or takes information from a text file. So buffer reader and file reader. So you don't want to show this because you just want to show your active classes. You go to your settings and then you want to just display only project classes or classes that's involved in your project. The other options are pretty self-explanatory. You want to skip getters and setters. You don't want to show your private methods or you want to skip constructors. The call depth is basically, let's say you have application in your application, more than 10 classes and, but you just want to focus on the top classes or the top five interactions. So we just say call depth 10. You can read more on it on the sequence diagram plugin information page. So I just say click OK. It won't take effect immediately. You just need to resequence or just regenerate the sequence diagram. Now, there you have it. From here, you might not want to use this directly in your assignments or use this as a working document because the color scheme might not be as nice or you want to make some more edits. So my suggestion to you is actually exporting this as a PUML extension or plant UML extension and just saving it. From there, you can actually open it in a text editor and see all the code or the elements in that particular sequence again. Now you can have two choices. You can use a plant UML editor uh, application that you can download, which I don't particularly have. I actually use it on websites. So the two websites I like are Plant Text UML Editor and Plant UML Web Server. So I'll link the two websites in the description below. Yes, this is actually quite self-explanatory. I'll also link the explanation or quick tips on how to get started with plant UML language. So here you have start UML, Bob and Alice. Let's say you want to do a reply from Alice. It's just simply saying Alice uh, replies back to Bob saying, hello, Bob. 
and then you see the difference being with the reply message you just need to do two dashes dash dash and the arrowhead so let's say you want to change bob into a proper actor so just need to check say actor bob make sure it's bob i mean now bob is an actor let's say you want to make alice an actor too so just say bob actor let's So now, Bob and Alice is an actor. Let's say they are shy people and they just saying uh, hello and hello Bob over and over again. So you want to make a loop condition or a loop um, loop frame. So simple enough. You just say loop and then uh, shy people and then you make sure you end the loop and you say submit. And now, now you have a loop activation uh, frame. That's how it is. It's quite simple and straightforward. Once you get used to it, it's a lot easier than actually using a diagramming application. From here, we just take our code again, copy, and we paste it in. Now you have it in this plant UML website. The one reason why I like it here and not just directly taking it from the plugin you have this bar that you can change the color scheme of, of your sequence diagram so maybe let's say you want to make it toy you can just change it to toy or you want to say amiga or you want to say plane which is what i like this is plane from here it's pretty safe explanatory you can just save this as an image and use it in your documents. The other one is plant text UML. Why do I like this one? Plant text UML. This is this version is up and down the view. So you, you have your code up here and you have your diagram at the bottom. For this particular one, right, you have it side by side. So I like it because it's easier for me as a preference to see it from side to side. So let's say I want to find name string formatter and then I know there's a loop here so I'll just make a loop so I'll find name string formatter name name string formatter here uh, activation so I just say loop loop condition is uh, all email in list in list no. and then I need to find the n so I need this generating new elements there because I'm making a new user every time I get an email and I want to make it after I finish and a return statement, return message or reply. So I have email user replies to mass email. So I have email user replies to mass email. So I say end of loop there. So I'll say refresh and you see I have my loop elements and my message. It takes a bit to get used to, but it's a lot faster. So rather than trying to get your paper diagram, that we did or that you did and I put it in a graphic application diagram like Visio. This is pretty straightforward. You just go to your IntelliJ, run the plugin, export the plant UML, open plant UML in a text editor. And then from there, you can further edit it on the two websites. Hopefully this has been helpful. It did help me a lot. And I will make sure that I include the two websites and a quick description on how you actually get to manipulate the plant UML language to better suit your diagram or better suit your need. Thanks for watching this journal entry. I hope you all the best and thank you.